So here we are in Cleveland, and uh, I think I may have just driven past the place I needed to be. I'm going to have to go down here and turn around. Clearly a very industrial part of the city. West 11th Street. Arriving at 3159 West 11th Street on the left. This will be the place. So here I am at the a Christmas story house in Cleveland. And I have it reserved for this evening. At least I hope so. If things go as planned. Obviously it doesn't look quite the way it did in the movie because uh, the buildings on either side have torn down and they've got it landscaped differently. And across the street from it is the uh, museum which I'll be going to here. I'm sorry, it's maybe not that building. Maybe it's this one over here. And they've got the uh, fire engine in there. And uh, a car, which I presume is like the one the old man had. We're gonna find out more when I take the tour. Life-size Randy. <laughs> and a bunch of other Christmas stuff here. Elf stuff and Grinch and uh, peanuts. Nightmare Before Christmas stuff. Harry Potter stuff. The Griswold. Everything Christmas here of a secular nature. Moose Mug Punch Bowl from Christmas Vacation. So this is just the gift shop. The museum is separate. Of course, Oval Team.
Got your Red Ryder BB guns here. Every conceivable different size of leg lamp. And of course, the movies. Bunny suits here. So I was correct. It's the gift shop, the garages for the old man's car, and the frozen flagpole fire truck, and then the museum over here. <clears throat> There's some on the street parking and Parking for six or seven cars right in front of the museum. <clears throat> As clarified on the sign here, this is not the fire truck from the movie, uh, which is still part of the uh, Chippewa Volunteer Firefighters Association in Niagara Falls, Canada, where the, uh, that 1938 Fort American La France is still in working order and available for public viewing at their museum. Whereas this one here is certainly similar in appearance and uh, was restored separately starting in 2014. And according to the write-up here, it says nothing about this being a different car, so apparently this is the 1938 Oldsmobile Touring Sedan that the old man had the love-hate relationship with. Unfortunately, with the lighting here, I can't seem to get a good exposure from top to bottom. Of 
plenty of people stopping by here. Looks like there's a tour in the museum right now. And they did say that the museum is part of the tour, so maybe you can't even go in there unless you're on the tour. That isn't too clear. But they really have a pretty good chunk of land here. Now that there's not a tour in the backyard, I'm going to walk across the street and see if I can look around the outside of the house a little bit. And of course, from the documentaries, this is the house that was used for the exteriors in the movie and the immediate neighborhood houses on either side, but everything else was filmed elsewhere, including most of the interiors. Apparently the uh, scenes where the leg lamp is showing through the windows were filmed here, but all the other interiors were uh, filmed in other houses or on a sound stage. So we can't expect everything to be exactly the same. And obviously this is a much nicer backyard than it would have been in the in the movie. And I don't recall if the house is really shown from the back in the movie. So I don't know that this matches up with much of anything. But they've definitely made an effort to uh, fix the place up. This makes me suspicious. Maybe they have people get married here. Well, I'm sure people get married here. No doubt about that. And immediately behind is a row of trees and then an industrial area. No other row of houses right behind here. Okay, so much for the exteriors. As they point out, open year round every day, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Closed on Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's Eve, and New Year's Day, and all other major holidays. So, presumably the 4th of July, Memorial Day, Labor Day, not itemized specifically. Oh, we have a nice big crowd. That's good. I like that. Oops, yeah. we're dropping phones. Are we allowed to take pictures? In all, all the pictures you want. The splash is okay. The flash is okay in here. In the museum, we ask no flash. Pretty well. Oh well. Oh well. Wow. And that was, it was the soft flow of electric sex. <laughs> so, with that in mind, when you pose with the leg lamp, show it the respect it deserves by putting your hands lovingly on <laughs> it. Yeah. Well, now, as I said, the house was built in 1895. Now, even for me, that's ancient. Would everybody sleep in one room?
Is this weird? The way it the really kids. looks in the movies? No, it was the yeah, this movie is. that the kids, the kids saw the movie. The parents Reportedly, this is the same shit as is appeared in the black part scene. I was watching it last night. Oh, you were watching it? Yeah. the shed, everything in the backyard was done back here. That is the actual shed from the movie. Now, the question that always arises how do the neighbors put up with you folks? 80,000 plus visitors a year. There's some simple answers to that. One, their houses are worth considerably more than that twenty to 40,000 I told you about. It is once again a safe and desirable neighborhood. The city of Cleveland on their part has invested a great deal of time, money and effort throughout this entire Tremont area. On our part, from our nonprofit organization, we have put out over $250,000 in grant money for various home improvement projects throughout the immediate neighborhood. Now the main way that we finance that is our 5K, 10K race. As clarified in the tour, this was in the movie, but it is not the same one that was pictured as the old man's car, although the same model.
So a couple of corrections on what I said in an earlier part of the video. The tour guide said that all scenes in the backyard were indeed filmed here, not on a lot somewhere else. And that the shed here is the real shed that appeared in the scene where Ralphie is shooting Black Bart and his bandits. Although obviously it looks quite different now with the siding on and everything. And the yard itself is much nicer condition now. And he pointed out that in the movie, if the drapes on the windows are open, showing outside, then that was filmed inside the house. Whereas if the drapes are shut, then it was filmed on the soundstage. Right across the street is the Rowley Inn, where I'm going to get dinner. And this was apparently not in the movie as far as appearing in it, although they pressed the inn into service as a place for all the uh, cast to change their costumes. Here's another view of the museum, and indeed they don't let you through here on your own. You have to be escorted by the tour guides. That is part of the tour. The tour of the house takes about half an hour, and the tour of the museum takes about another half hour. So as I mentioned before, I've rented the place for the evening, and uh, here's what that experience is like. You lock up the gates, you're given the keys, and uh, the place is yours. There is a back entrance. This house was divided as a duplex at one point. Get it all locked. And, uh, up the stairs into the so-called loft. And then you're in your own space, which is separate from the main part of the house. There's a fully equipped kitchen here. Modern, unlike the rest of the house. There is a staff that maintains the place, and their cleaning equipment is in there. They don't exactly stock the fridge for you, but they do put some bottled water in there. <clears throat> Nothing but ice in the <laughs> cooler. There's a phone number you can call if you need something. Visitor's guide. Even a phone if you need it. Microwave toaster, all the good stuff. Dining room table. And then there's the loft proper. Which would make a pretty nice little apartment on a permanent basis, really. Pretty normal bathroom with Darren McGavin always checking you out as you're in the bathroom. Comfy chairs, TV with all of the Christmas story and related movies. And then the bed itself. This can sleep two people, it's queen size. You get a closet with extra stuff, an ironing board, an iron. And there's a tub here with some stuff in it. I suppose there's extra blankets and things in there, and that's what there is. There's a uh, comforter wrapped up back there if it gets cold, I guess. All the comforts of home. And a view down at the gift shop and museum across the street. Bed looks pretty comfy. Now the 
as I understand it, the rental is for the house, the loft and the house, and you can use any part of the house that you want to, not just the loft. So you can have between one and six people here, apparently, and that's because the two kids' beds, Ralphie's and his brother's, and the mom's and old man's beds are all available for use if you want to use them. And those are accessed through this one door, one story below the loft. So this is the part of the house that gets covered in the tours, in the old-fashioned bathroom. with pretty good representations of vintage shaving stuff. Got to have that box of Life Boy soap and of course the bar. Uh, modern outlets, but period style switches. This place you're not supposed to go into, but it's clearly the office and sewing room. Very in, various vintage things. And this is the bedroom. Once again, you can use these beds if you want, but you're supposed to make it clear that you use them so they can change the, the linens and sheets and so on um, if you did that. So we're back in the loft, let's go downstairs. By the way, there is a phone here. It's just hooked up to a recording. Downstairs, you've got the living room, presumably the stairs to the basement, but they didn't say anything about going down there. So, um, pictures on the wall, the kids and the folks, fireplace, the Christmas tree. Hidden behind the tree is. The Red Rider BB gun. There's the infamous pile of cords and uh, adapters and the rat's nest of wires, just like in the movie. And which window would be complete without a leg lamp? And of course the radio on which to listen to Orphan Annie and other radio programs. The Fred Gilet box with another leg lamp. This is the front door of course which the tours come in and out through. And of course the kitchen. <clears throat> and there's plenty of room underneath the sink for crawling under there if you're so inclined. And 
and the dining room table. Now, of course, the layout here isn't identical to what it was in the movie because this was a real house and not a sound stage. They've adapted it within reason and tried to get the decor right, but the floor plan doesn't necessarily match. Uh, still pretty close. And a bunch of locked doors here that go to various maintenance areas and then the back door of the house. You even have old newspapers here, or at least reproductions thereof. And the turkey in the oven. Done a pretty nice job of this. The hat rack with all the different hats, including Scott Farkas's coonskin cap and the pink bunny bonnet and the aviator helmet and the elf's hat from the uh, Higby's department store. So my plan is to do the obligatory watching of the movie upstairs. They let you into the house um, around 6 o'clock. That's when they're done with it. The tour ends at 5.30. It takes them about half an hour to go through and set everything right and ready for rental. And then it's yours until 12 hours later. And it's funny that there's still people out here coming by taking pictures even as, I, even as I'm in here. Anyway, as I said, I think I'm going to watch the movie and refresh my memory of some key scenes. And then see about doing some cameos and reenactments. Ultimately, I did not find the parents' room up here, so I guess it doesn't exist. They did say you could sleep six people here, including those beds, so I didn't ask them, and probably they didn't tell me because they knew I was by myself, but maybe they have a couple of cots or something they can bring out to accommodate the six people they talked about. And there's certainly room here, so maybe that's the way they do it. They encourage you to uh, maintain the privacy of the loft by locking all the doors behind you, as there is a lot of attention given to this building. And uh, even with the gates closed, apparently people sneak around outside, and it's just a good idea to have the doors closed and locked. Looks like it's just one too many. Oh, Mom, do I have to? Oh. 
V A L T I N E. Be sure to drink your Ovaltine. And so here it is at 5 a.m. and my time of departure. And it was a fun night in the Christmas Story House. <laughs>